During the 2013-14 season, the 59 NCAA Division I men's hockey teams combined for nearly 70,000 shots on net. Standing in the way of all those flying discs of vulcanized rubber were more than 100 goaltenders. And now we're here to honor the most outstanding net miner in college men's hockey with the presentation of the inaugural Mike Richter Award. With me today are Mike Richter, the namesake for the award, and his boyhood idol, Bernie Perrant, a two-time Stanley Cup and Vezina Trophy winner with the Philadelphia Flyers. The winner of the Mike Richter Award will be joining us soon. Uh, created and presented by Let's Play Hockey, the Mike Richter Award is also sponsored by the Herb Brooks Foundation, whose goal it is to grow the game of hockey and give the game back to kids. Representing the foundation today is board member and former Harvard defenseman, Neil Sheedy. First of all, background on the Mike Richter Award and how it's chosen. Criteria for the award include academics, community service, sportsmanship, and of course, on ice performance. Candidates for the award were determined by nominations from all 59 head coaches. Those coaches nominated 19 candidates this season. The five finalists and winner were then selected by a committee of coaches, scouts, and members of the media. The finalists for the 2014 Mike Richter Award are Sam Britton of Denver, Connor Hellebuck of UMass Lowell, Joel Rumpel of Wisconsin, Adam Wilcox of Minnesota, and Clay Witt of Northeastern. Together, the five finalists combined for a 2.03 goals against average, a 9.34 save percentage, and a grade point average of 3.23. Now allow me to introduce the namesake for today's award. Largely considered one of the top goaltenders of the last 30 years, Mike Richter played youth hockey in Pennsylvania and New York before heading to the University of Wisconsin to stop bucks for the Badgers. In two seasons in Madison, he was named the 1986 WCHA Freshman of the Year and earned all WCHA honors in 1987. Consistently ranked one of the world's best goaltenders, Mike played 666 games during his 14-year NHL career, all with the New York Rangers. A three-time All-Star, he backstopped the Rangers to their first Stanley Cup in 40 years in 1994. His 300 wins, uh, 301 wins ranked second in Rangers history, and his number 35 became the third number retired by the team. On the international stage, Mike competed in three Olympic Games, including in 2002 when he helped the U.S. capture a silver medal in the last game ever coached by Herb Brooks. In addition, he led Team USA to the World Cup of Hockey Championship in 1996. Mike was in inducted into the uh, University of Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame in 2005 and the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame in 2008. Please welcome Mike Richter. Thank you, it's, uh, it's my deep honor to be in part of this today. Uh, to be involved in this uh, award, uh, considering the incredible tradition of excellence uh, in goaltending, the position of goaltending in college hockey is, is something. You have Ken Dryden's, uh, the Rob Stalbers, the uh, uh, Ryan Millers of the world, and uh, so it's a real, real privilege to be part of this. Um, there's just two things I want to mention quickly, and that's the first um, is the idea of this award. I think it's fitting, right? The position of goaltending, um, it's obviously important to the team, uh, but the equipment, the demands, the, uh, everything about the position is somewhat unique within a team sport. And the goal as a group is always the same, to have success, to win. But it's often, I think, um, goalies get, as we were saying in the back, Plenty of, plenty of credit uh, and plenty of blame, but I think it's actually not a bad idea given the level of talent that we have um, in college hockey right now to specifically call out that position of goaltending and uh, to honor this unique position I think is fitting. But if you look across hockey today from every level, um, our game has grown so well. The guys are bigger, stronger, faster, better coached, better conditioned than they've been in the past um, 10 years out. And uh, the level is incredible, um, and nowhere is, it, is the position of uh, nowhere else in the game is it, but the position of goaltender has improved so much at every level. And you see that if you're at the games last night, um, you just had four fantastic goaltenders out there. The five finalists for this award um, are really, really impressive athletes um, on and off the ice. But these guys are um, professional in the best sense of the word. Um, so the result of all this training is what you see now, and uh, I think it takes a, a kind of special person to be named. I'm glad I wasn't the guys in the selection committee, 
but the person that we are recognizing today is exceptional. Um, he has uh, been a complete player from the moment he came to campus, and according to his coach especially, his work ethic is like none other. Um, and this, I think, to me, is kind of embodies what's most important because there's a lot of talent out there and there's something that's going to separate it the successful players. Um, about 30 years ago, when I was in grade school, not far from here, I was lucky enough to <clears throat> hear um, my idol talk about what it needs to be, means to be successful. Uh, of course, his name is Bernie Perrant, and his message was fairly simple. It was the three Ds of success, as he called them, discipline, desire, and uh, determination. And, um, you know, this, uh, I'd ask Bernie to come on up and help me present, but the uh, recipient of today's award has uh, certainly employed these three Ds. It's a really impressive story, and I encourage you to learn as much as you can outside of the amazing stats that he has. Um, you know this. Uh, so, Bernie, come on up, and we'll uh, we'll present this award. But this this uh, recipient not only played at a high level, but I think this is the key. Um, he played with a level of consistency that was unmatched, and this is really the true mark of a champion. Not just playing great sometimes, but playing um, at the upper limits of capability as much as possible. So, uh, Bernie and I it gives us great uh, pleasure to present uh, the first uh, inaugural, uh, the inaugural uh, Mike Richter Goldtin Award to. Uh, Connor Hellebach from the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Congratulate the four teams for making it here in Philadelphia. It's a great weekend and a great two games so far of hockey so far. And uh, I want to give a special thank you to uh, the guys at Let's Play Hockey, Doug Johnson and Kevin Kurt, who did so much to put this together and really get this award off and uh, get it really to everyone here. I also uh, want to say this is a huge milestone in my life um, with Fidley Mike Richter as a namesake. This is I, I just I met him earlier today and you know just talking with him for the last 30 minutes it's been probably something I'll never forget in my life. Um, I remember looking up to him and he really inspired me growing up. And, uh, I also would like to recognize Bernie Perrant and just talking to him I'll never forget either. Um, I know Mike Richter looked up to Bernie Perrant when he was a young goalie and I know he's inspired him and he's already inspired me just talking to him a little bit. Now uh, I'd like to thank my teammates for everything they've done for me because without them, this might be possible. I also would like to thank my coaching staff at UMass Lowell for giving me everything I needed to succeed and making me the goal that I am today. And lastly and most importantly, I'd like to thank my parents for sticking with me throughout my career and giving me every opportunity I needed to succeed. Thank you. Um, some, some background on Connor and what he did this year. Um, he led the nation in goals against average of 1.79 and a save percentage of 941 for the Hockey East Tournament champion Riverhawks. He's a native of Commerce, Michigan, uh, with a record of 18-9-2 this year, uh, and he ranked second in the nation with six shutouts. Uh, he began the season splitting time with a senior netminer, Doug Carr, but assumed the starting job in mid-January. Uh, uh, on April 5th, he signed an entry-level contract with the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, he was a fifth round pick in the 2002-2012 draft. Uh, for his career, he posted a 38-12-2 record with a 1.60 goals against average and a 9.46 save percentage. He led the nation in both goals against and save percentage in both categories uh, in both seasons. Uh, he finished with as many shutouts as losses in his 53 game career. His career save percentage is 9.46 is the best in college hockey history. Michigan State's Ryan Miller, the 2001 Hobie Baker Award winner and current St. Louis Blues netminder, Posted a 941 save percentage from 2000 to 2002. Uh, with that, uh, we'll open up for questions. Mm -hmm. 
I guess just for all, all three of you, just what do you, what do you think may, has made it especially tough to be a college goal? You see the pressure, the single elimination tournament, and a lot of the weight these tournaments after tournaments. I guess for Mike, comparing it to the NHL experiences you had in Connor as well. I'll, I'll start by saying, um, I'll tell you what makes it tough is being as small as Bernie and I are here when you're playing against guys like that. Um, I think what I said in my opening remarks about the consistency, <clears throat> if you look across the NHL, there's not a lot of days that you can take off. There's not a lot of hiccups you can have. You can't have a bad period because it's so competitive. And I think that is the case with college hockey. Um, these are great, great athletes. They're well-trained from an early age. And there's a lot of talent out there. So you have to have a level of consistency. It's, you don't have a lot of time to learn on the job. There's just not a lot of margin for error. And when you get into the situation with this Final Four, and the weeks preceding this, it's a single elimination game. And uh, we, I love watching the, the seven game series because there's a lot of intrigue there, but there's something very, very <clears throat> special about one game determines who wins. Either there, there's absolutely no margin. And I think that's, that's a great thing uh, for these athletes because it, it, it brings out the best in them you see that. So I'm not sure I'm answering your question if there's <clears throat> a difference, but I will say that that challenge is there at every level and it's certainly here in, uh, in college. <clears throat> very well, very well said. The uh, congratulations, Connor. This is awesome. I, you know, when, when I look back, uh, when I was your age, sadly to say, that's a that's a long time ago. Like I said earlier, I think uh, Moses was still alive when I played. But <laughs> that's all right. They, um, um, you know, always, always, I learned at the young age that. Having a vision is very, very important, you know, and um, as you grow uh, from college to um, professional level, um, you know, for me was, um, um, at the time was my vision was to play National Hockey League, which, you know, it's very, very important because you can't have good games all the time, so you have uh, downs, you know, you have, you have phases where things aren't going so good but as long as you keep your fashion which is or your vision which is for me was to play in the national hockey league then it's all right you know because you work on your weaknesses and then you get back on top again and move on and of course when i got in the national hockey league was um my vision was uh, to be on the team to win the uh, the Stanley cup so it was the same approach you know <clears throat> Believe in yourself, and when things are rough, just focus on on your vision. At, at the end, the end results, and then every, everything works out. Uh, I want to start off by saying thank you, and uh, I feel like it was a huge honor being next to these two legends. Um, I would say for college hockey, it's consistency, because uh, it's a very defensive, very defensive sport in college. It's uh, I would say. You could see 17 shots one night, and then the next night see 35. So you have to be prepared for seeing little, little rubber and a lot of rubber. So, you know, if you work really hard and you are used to every type of the game, I think that's what makes college so different. Connor, assuming they're going to give this award out for many years to come, what's it mean? You're always going to be the first one at the top of that list. What does it mean to you to be the first one to win this award? You know, I think it's a huge honor, and I think it's a huge milestone in my life that I will never forget. Um, and just, just being picked for this out of so many great goaltenders that could have easily been chosen, it's just, it just says something that they, these guys believe in me, and I'm going to always I'm gonna always focus on my career knowing that, and, and I'm always going to have an added focus to it because of these guys. And, you know, I hope, I hope we can set a good standard for the future because goaltenders should look up to this and should be really proud and really really striving for excellence to achieve this because this is just huge. Everything they put together here and everything they've done for this award is just it's so professional and you know, I could say I could go on about days about how awesome this experience is. Scott McLaughlin, WEI.com. Uh, Connor, outside of maybe the very first start in your career you've had great numbers all the way through. 
Um, but what are some of the areas you think you've improved the most over these two years, and what are some of the most important things you've learned? You know, I feel like I've learned a lot mentally. Uh, you got to go through some hard times. <laughs> Not the same. You got to go through some hard times to really know what it takes and know what you have to do personally to get to your to your best potential every night. Um, I feel like I've gotten a lot stronger and a lot faster. Um, I feel like I got a lot more calm too, and you know, I, I, be, I think I became more of a team player and uh, being part of that team it makes it makes the guys in front of me work a lot harder for me. And just, just being part of that, it's just, I think that's why we were as, as successful as we were this year. It's because we all worked really hard for each other. Jim Conley from U.S. College Hockey Online. Mike, when we look at the Holy Baker Award as the nation's best player, there's only been two goaltenders. You mentioned Ryan Miller, Cameron mentioned Ryan Miller as one of them. Does the fact that goalies sometimes get overlooked make this award even more significant and more important to you? I guess so. I, I never felt like I was overlooked in my career. Um, usually when you're blamed, you probably <laughs> deserve it. <laughs> um, but you get plenty of backlades too. But I do think there's something, it's so unique. There's not a lot of sports that have this, this great team concept. And, and hockey is really a tight-knit group. If you look at a successful locker room, and everybody's got to be pulling. You can't have your own agenda. But this goalie is off doing something that's very different than anybody else. Of course, a forward and a defenseman is different than each other in a sense. But the goalie is really different, and uh, there's a there's a certain approach and, and uh, type of excellence that um, can be there whether the team has success or not. But normally, when you have success as a goalie, you're doing your job to help the team have as much success as it possibly can. And um, I, I do think it's a the more I thought about this award, it's 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 a very it's a it's a good idea to. Um, not lump everybody in one category and say this is a very special position and it's a very uh, important position and we're going to you know, honor that unique uh, set of skills. Uh, Matt Simmons, you the CHO. Uh, just for you, Connor, with your size, you've talked before about how your style of play is big and boring, but I mean, obviously it's important. But, uh, in your time in the position, what has gone into making it as effective as it has? And also, again, with your size, is there anybody that uh, you've modeled your style of play on, maybe like a Sean Burke, for instance? You know, I, I grew up looking up to old Coles again, funny as it is, Mike Richter, so um, modeling it is their athleticism and, and uh, the way they battle every night. I think that's huge. And Yeah, I am big and boring, but You'll never see me give up on a puck. Um, I think that's that's what makes big work is because these big goalies don't just go down and let pucks hit them. They're they're doing whatever it takes to make those saves. And, uh, I think that puts it perfectly. Uh, Aiden Merritt from the New England Hockey Journal. Mike and, and Bernie, uh, over the last, Mike, you mentioned it, the last 10 years, but even 20 years, 50 years, the position has changed and. Goaltenders now, especially at the college level, are, are all very good. Can you talk in specifics about what you see goalies doing now that they weren't able to do when you guys were playing? Um, start. Um, I think the, uh, the, the athleticism um, that they have, and I think the, uh, the goalies now seem to be a student of the game. A lot of young kids have their own coaches. Um, I can remember reading Jacques Plant's book, and he taught a lot to Bernie and Joe Bertagna from um, Harvard. Uh, you know, there's so much to learn, and it's one of the things that really keeps uh, this position to me so interesting. I mean, if I could play till I was 90, I would have, because I would have been better. You're learning, you're learning. And Bernie was talking earlier about understanding what your defensemen do in front of you, and what do you do on a left uh, left hand shot versus a right. There's so many nuances to the game that go well beyond size and strength and even athleticism. Um, it's why you have a Marty Brodeur who's so great still now. He's gotten uh, experience. And so, um, where the hell was your question? What was it? <laughs> <laughs> what are goalies doing now that, yeah. that they weren't and, and so I was going somewhere with this. Um, they're just, they're, they're better trained. There's so much to this sport. And so you see these young kids coming up have really studied the game. And I think it, it means that the, 
the entire lot of them is so much better. And, and I mean that when I say that. If you look across the, the, all of the 59 colleges, the great players out there, you look at the depth chart of the NHL teams, that is a rough go. And you, people talk about that and when there's the original six, how hard it was to break in. And that's quite true, but it's hard to break in now because of these kids coming in with so much specific knowledge of the, of the game, their training, all of that. Um, I just think that the um, entire game is lifted and the position of goaltending specifically has really grown um, to levels that are, you know, as good as it's ever been, if not better. And it comes in different packages, big guys, small guys. You know, Dominic Hasek was a, a guy that came into the league and was so odd to watch. But there's a consistency with what he did, and Connor had mentioned that. He battled on the pucks. He never gave up. If he had a bad game or a bad period, he'd come back with a better one. These are consistent things that need to be done no matter what your size or style. And I think goalies are figuring that out better now than ever. Hey. <clears throat> also, you know, the game has changed tremendously. The old days, if you remember, um, you know, the one years just go, uh, go up and down. And you had more shots from the, uh, from the angles, so you could play the angles and, and stand up um, uh, quite a bit more. Today the game has changed, um, uh, especially in front of the net. You know, you have a crease, and um, I always challenge the um, commissioner with this, but um, maybe one day um, you'll listen. The crease belongs to the goalies, you know, and once the goalie makes a first save, then you may have maybe four or five guys in the crease poking at the puck and trying to put it in. And I think with this um, evolution, the goalie had to change his style and have more of a butterfly uh, style, you know, to, um, to overcome those uh, challenges. And, um, and, you know, in that style, like we were talking earlier before, um, I remember Glenn Hall, Tony Spazito had the same style, you know, so it goes back, goes back a long, a long way and it's a, you know, it's a great way to, um, uh, uh, to perform and you could see the, you know, the athletes, um, I mean the goalies are such great athletes today, it's incredible, I, if I made one move the way they're moving today, you know, my career would be over with, you know, it's, uh, they, they're, they're such, such great athletes. But I mean, you know, having said that, and we shared this earlier today too, that, that the understanding of the game has remained the same. And Mike touched on it too, and uh, Connor too a little bit on, you know, if you have a left-hand shot versus a right-hand shot, um, how is your defenseman going to react to those shooters? Because they're all different, you know. So, so, so to me, it's, it stays the same. You have to study your defenseman. You have, you know, and and for me, the best advice for uh, Connor in this uh, young career is I always, when I have goals, every game, you know, you have you have goals against against you, and I always practice the next day the same situation that happened during the game when they scored. And then this is when you get better one step at a time. And then because, you know, Tom, you're talking about Tom, you know, with this book, I remember him saying that you never arrive as a goalie. That was so, so important. You know, there's always room for improvement. And if you have this uh, frame, frame of mind um, and you're associated with a good team, and go, the magic happens. I think we'll wrap it up there. Uh, um, you know, this is a huge honor. Uh, like I said earlier, it's like going to be a huge milestone in my life. And, and I'll never forget the experience I just went through with meeting with Victor and Brandon. You know, everything that my school has done for me and the teammates have done for me, it's just something that I'll never forget. Um, when you got to little Doug Howard's coming up in great season, he's another classman. You competed with him for two years for playing time. What was it like competing against him? What did you learn from him? What was your relationship like? You know, I could I go on days about how much I love the guy. I wish him the best of luck right now. I believe he's playing on Sunday. You know, we battled really hard. That being said, we are brothers now. I see him as, as someone that I will always look up to. 
someone that I always keep in touch with. He works so hard on the ice, and it just makes me better. It makes me work harder. So, you know, what is it like? It's it's something that I feel like every goalie should go through, but they might not get the opportunity because the way he handles everything, it's something that, it's the experience he brings that I feel like every goalie kind of needs. Hey, kind of, when did you find out you won? What was your initial reaction? Well, I found out, like, yesterday. And, you know, just, just knowing that, I just, I had to soak it in for a little bit. Like, you, you now I'm studying a little bit because it's still such a surreal moment. And, you know, it feels great to be, to, to be honored like that. You know, to have those guys look up to me like that. And, or not look up to me, but look to me and earning that award, deserving that. It's just it's something that I'm going to appreciate. Hunter, when did you, um, when did you decide you wanted to go to the I decided when I was really young. When I first started playing, I had an older brother who is well scored, plays forward. You know, he used to always shoot on me in street hockey. And, you know, I always had to lace him up and I had to stop him. And, you know, just when I was younger, I just, I feel like it was more fun for me. I, I, I did like skating. You know, I, I started skating when I was around five, and I think that's when I decided on What's your brother's name? Brother's Chris. When now? Yeah, you know, that was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had. You know, I'm so happy that this is the way I got to happen. You know, I, I love everyone that I've been part of so far. I love the team that I have. I love the guys we love them now. So the way Chris and like this, it just, it just tops off my job. You know, I, I can't ask you to coach. Did you lose a lot of sleep over wrestling with the decision? Uh, you know, I don't think I lost a lot of sleep, but I should have. Because the amount of thought I had to spend on doing it and the amount of people I talked to. I just, just weighing out the odds, and you know, I feel like this is the best. I gotta take a rest, and this is the best opportunity for me. You know, just guys, guys that are around me just made me so much more prepared for it. I feel like that.